I'm James Messer from ProfessorMesser.com, and in this video, I wanted to give you an overview of Cisco CCENT and their CCNA routing and switching certifications. These are arguably some of the most popular networking certifications in the industry. So in this video, I want to give you an overview of what you can do to earn these certifications and maybe some strategies that might help you along the way. In this video, we'll talk about the first two levels, the entry level and the associate level. This first certification that you can earn is the Cisco Certified Entry Networking Technician, or the CCENT. One step above that is the associate level, the Cisco Certified Network Administrator, Routing and Switching. There are many different Cisco Certified Network Administrator certifications, so I'm qualifying this one as the routing and switching flavor of the CCNA. This is usually the minimum requirement that most people will be working towards to get their first big certification in networking. The CCENT, or the Cisco Certified Entry Networking Technician Certification, is a single exam. You would take the 100-105 as the latest version of this exam. That is the Interconnecting Cisco Networking Devices Part 1 exam. You may see this abbreviated as the ICND1 exam. And the current version of this exam, which correlates to the 100-105, is the version 3.0 of this exam. If you're working on the associate level exam, that would be the CCNA RNS or the Cisco Certified Network Administrator Routing and Switching. You can either take a single exam or you can take two exams to earn this certification. If you take a single exam, it's the 200-125, the Interconnecting Cisco Networking Devices Accelerated. You may see this abbreviated as the CCNAX. Many people opt to take two exams to earn this certification. The first exam is the one we talked about previously, the 100-105, the Interconnecting Cisco Networking Devices Part 1, or the ICND1. You would also take the ICND2, which is the 200-105, Interconnecting Cisco Networking Devices Part 2. And by taking both Part 1 and Part 2, you would earn the Cisco Certified Network Administrator Routing and Switching Certification. Let's start with discussing the ICND1. This is the Interconnecting Cisco Networking Devices Part 1. This is the exam that you would take to earn your CCENT, or it would be the first exam you would take to earn your CCNA routing and switching. The exam is 90 minutes long, and it's somewhere between 45 to 55 questions. The exam itself costs $150 in the United States, and the scores that you'll need to get on this exam will range between 300 and 1,000. You don't know exactly what your passing score will be until the exam starts because it's based on the questions that you're given in the question pool. Usually, the passing score is somewhere between 800 points and 850 points. There are five different sections on the ICND1. Section 1 is the network fundamentals. That's 20% of the exam. Section 2 is the LAN switching fundamentals. That's 26%. Section 3.0 is the routing fundamentals at 25%. Section 4.0 is infrastructure services at 15%. And Section 5.0 is infrastructure maintenance at 14%. You'll notice this is the first level of exams that you'll be taking that you'll either earn your CCENT or work towards your CCNA routing and switching. So a lot of the time topics on this exam are fundamental networking topics, easing you into some of the more advanced topics. And eventually, you'll get the most advanced topics on the ICND2. The ICND2 is very similar in structure and style to the ICND1. This is the Interconnecting Cisco Networking Devices Part 2. The number for this exam is the 200-105. This is also a 90-minute exam. It's also 45 to 55 questions long. And it, again, costs $150 in the United States to take this exam. You have a similar scoring method on this exam as you do to the ICND1. The structure of the exam is a little bit different. You have Section 1.0, which is LAN switching technologies. That's 26% of the exam. Section 2.0 is routing technologies. 20% of the exam is Section 2.0. Section 3.0 is the WAN technologies at 16%. Section 4 is infrastructure services at 14%. And Section 5.0 is infrastructure maintenance at 15% of the exam. 
Instead of taking the ICND-1 and the ICND-2 separately to earn your CCNA routing and switching, you may opt to take the 200-125 exam, which is the Interconnecting Cisco Networking Devices Accelerated. That's what the X is for on the CCNAX abbreviation for this exam. It's 90 minutes long, but you're going to get a few more questions than if you were to take the ICND-1 or the ICND-2 by themselves. There will be about 50 to 60 questions on this exam. This exam costs $295 in the United States to take. You can see on this exam, they've taken the same topics as the ICND-1 and the ICND-2, and they've put them together on this combined exam. So all of these different sections look very familiar to what we've already seen in the ICND-1 and the ICND-2. Obviously, the percentage of different topics on this exam will be a little bit different, but you're still going to need to know all of this content to be able to take this combined exam. If you're working towards your CCNA routing and switching, you now have a decision to make. You can take the single exam that combines both the ICND-1 and the ICND-2 together and take it all in one sitting, or you can take the two exams individually. If you're planning to take a single exam, it combines all of the topics together, but it's not half the cost. You're effectively paying twice as much to take the single exam versus splitting the cost between the two other exams. You should not only be very good at taking certification exams, you should also be very knowledgeable at the topics that are on these exam objectives. These are not easy exams to pass. You need to know exactly what's going to be asked of you on these exams. And generally, someone who already has practical experience in networking and with Cisco products would opt to take a single exam. For most of us, we would opt to take two exams separately. That way, we can concentrate on half of the material, learn it, walk into the room, pass the certification, and then shift gears and study for the second exam separately. Fortunately, you don't have to decide right out of the gate whether you're going to be taking a single exam or two individual exams. You can start studying for the ICND-1 become familiar with what would be expected on that exam, and then decide if that's something you'd like to take as two separate exams, or maybe you're very comfortable with the information and you can continue to memorize information into the ICND2 content and take both of them together. The option at that point would be up to you. The exam itself is going to ask you questions in a lot of different ways. You will get the traditional multiple choice questions where there is a single answer. You will also get multiple choice questions where there are multiple answers on the exam. Cisco also provides drag and drop questions on the exam and fill in the blank as well. There are also router simulations where they'll put you into a terminal screen and you'll need to type into that terminal as if you were connecting directly to a router or switch. Cisco will also give you what they call a testlet. Well, they will give you a scenario and then ask you multiple questions about that scenario. Similar to that is the simlet, where there is a single simulation. And you will then be asked multiple questions about the information that's in those routers and switches that you will interactively be working with. Many parts of the Cisco exam deal with networking fundamentals, understanding how the technology works under the hood. But a lot of the exam deals with configuration and management of Cisco-specific devices. You'll need to know how to configure, set up, monitor, and maintain Cisco switches and Cisco routers. So many people might decide to get actual physical equipment to use in their own lab, whereas other people may want to prefer to do this in a virtual environment online. Whether you're working with physical equipment or with something that is online and virtual, you'll need to know a lot about Cisco CLI. That's their command line interface. You'll be prompted with questions about the CLI on the exam, and you may be given an empty CLI screen and be expected to perform functions at that command line. Some people, when they're learning about these routers and switches, like to have physical equipment so they can plug in everything themselves. They can connect up wide area network and local area network interfaces and actually see and feel those different interfaces and see what it takes to configure them on physical devices. In reality, of course, you rarely see these devices. Normally, you're configuring them, setting them up in a closet or in the data center, and then you often don't see them again as a network administrator. Almost all of your interaction with those devices will be from a command line where you're sitting at your desk, which may be in a different room, a different building, or even a different country than these switches and routers that you're administering. 
If you're not getting physical equipment, you may opt to use Cisco's free option, which is Packet Tracer. This is an application they make available to people on their website that you can download and run in a Windows or a Linux environment. Packet Tracer simulates a networking environment. You're able to connect things together virtually and configure them as if you were sitting in front of live equipment. It doesn't do everything that an actual router or switch might be. But for the purposes of the CCNA routing and switching, it gets you 90% of the way. There are also a number of third-party options from other organizations that can simulate a Cisco environment and others that may even require that you provide the iOS software so that you can simulate an actual router or switch using Cisco's code itself. Hopefully that's given you a nice overview of what you can do to help earn your CCNT or your CCNA routing and switching certification. And maybe now you have some ideas of how to get from where you are now to earning these very popular certifications.